Good morning and welcome to the studios of the National Tele Television Network at Hewanora House, Point Seraphine, Castries, St. Lucia. We are here broadcasting live from the studio in order to meet two objectives today. The first is we are going to launch a brand new publication that talks to the issue of apiculturists in seven islands. It's going to tell us about the management practices currently being used in, isle, in the following islands, Trinidad and Tobago, Grenada, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, St. Lucia, Dominica, St. Kitts and Nevis in the Eastern and Southeastern Caribbean. And we'll go across the oceans to Samoa in the Pacific and also provide you with a baseline um, description of the management practices. That's the first objective today. The second objective is to launch the 2022 Hiranara National Honey Show for St. Lucia. This year, exciting possibilities and expectations as we partner with IGY Rodney Bay Marina and link ourselves to the Atlantic Rally for Cruisers. We are going to be doing this uh, important activity on the 10th of December in Grosley at Rodney Bay. In studio, we have a distinguished gathering of St. Lucians. We have Dame Paulette Louise, who is the Governor General Emeritus of St. Lucia and a member of the National Steering Committee for the Global Environmental Facility Small Grants Program, UNDP, St. Lucia. We also have next to her, Honorable Emma Hippolyte, a lady from Sufre, perhaps one of the most precious pieces of estate in St. Lucia. The identity of St. Lucia comes from her constituency. I'm talking about the Pitons of St. Lucia. The, uh, Ms. Hippo, Emma Hippolyte is the Minister of Commerce, Manufacturing, Business Development, Cooperatives, and Consumer Affairs. We also have uh, my colleague, Lorraine um, Nicholas, who is the UN Coordinating Officer for St. Lucia, next to uh, another colleague of mine from UNDP, Dr. Prosper. And we have Kofi Dover, who's an architect on, uh, on this project. Welcome all of you. And of course, the inevitable Richard Matthias, who is going to be presenting on apiculture in St. Lucia and on the Honey Show today. Without further ado, I want to begin this uh, session with a short welcome address. In 2012, the Jeff Small Grants Program arrived in St. Lucia to begin an autonomous country program. 
Prior to 2012, the Barbados and Eastern Caribbean program ran from Anguilla in the north to Grenada in the south. And you truly was the program manager for those 10 islands. However, on about 2010, the Caribbean islands, the governments of the Caribbean islands at a meeting in Belize, decided that they wanted separate autonomous country programs. And therefore, it was my task between 2011 and 12 to transition many of these countries to separate independent country programs. And because of that, I returned to St. Lucia and applied for the position in St. Lucia. The country program in St. Lucia has funded in excess of 20 million US dollars worth of projects. We have projects all over St. Lucia. The last time I checked was 114 projects between 2012 and 2022. We have contributed to employment in many ways. We have helped to reduce St. Lucia's carbon footprint. We have protected biodiversity of all kinds in St. Lucia. We have reduced soil erosion, and we have contributed to the training of our people in St. Lucia. An important thematic area for us is apiculture. In fact, the very first project we funded in St. Lucia was an apiculture project. It came as a result of the Ministry of Agriculture coming to us and saying that apiculture was on a downswing in St. Lucia. It had become dormant for many years, and it required an injection of funding, a kind of renaissance. And therefore, we funded our first project in Schrozel, and thereafter, a number of other projects. To date, we have funded approximately 12 projects in St. Lucia in apiculture, 1.2 million US dollars worth of investment, and we are continuing to invest. In fact, before my board tomorrow, there is another project for consideration. We are here to stay in St. Lucia. We are here to work with the government and people of St. Lucia to, to attain sustainable development. Thank you very much for being here. Thank you very much for our studio audience and also for those joining us via NTN television, those joining us via Facebook, YouTube, and other social media platforms. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Without further ado, let me uh, invite Richard Matthias. Richard is the president of the Ionola Apiculture Collective, one of the gentlemen pushing a more scientific approach to apiculture management and development in St. Lucia and the Eastern Caribbean. And Richard will be off to Samoa next year. I'm very proud of that, to assist our colleagues in Samoa in developing the apiculture industry there. St. Lucia is exporting talent now, Minister. And we are going to continue to do that. So let me welcome, join me in welcoming Richard to the podium to do the presentation on the baseline study. Richard will be joined by Dr. Shada Mahibe from Trinidad, who is a colleague of mine, and she's the national coordinator for Trinidad and Tobago. Richard, ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome Richard. Good morning, everybody. I would like to follow the established protocol and welcome you all here today. Um, it's my pleasure to present this presentation. Um, I hope our gentlemen in the studio can bring it online for us so that you could all participate in what we're about to share with you. Um, yes, no? Studio? Ah, wonderful. Okay. Um, joining me this morning uh, will be my colleague, Dr. Mahabir. Um, we work very closely in work putting together this project. Um, and she's joining us live via Zoom um, to help with this presentation. So she's going to lead us first, and then I will take over halfway through. And Dr. Mahabe, um, please take over. Hi. Hi, good morning. Um, first of all, all protocols observed. Uh, thank you very much for um, uh, allowing me to share in this very um, auspicious occasion this morning, the launching of your Honey Show, as well as the launching of this particular document, um, which is a, an important addition to the literature for apiculture in the Caribbean region. So without any further ado, let's begin the presentation. Next slide, please. So, um, 
The regional project, as we commonly refer to it, had a number of important objectives. The first of which was to establish an efficient and effective knowledge management system, which is built on accurate baseline and diagnostic studies. Now, under this objective, what was supposed to be completed was our baseline study, which included a summary of the flora and fauna within the participating um, islands, as well as a capacity diagnostic study, which is basically an understanding of the knowledge, the attitudes, as well as the practices of the beekeepers in uh, across the Caribbean. We're very pleased to, um, to announce, of course, that this, this part of the project is completed, and we are here to launch the actual document itself, which brings us to the results of the particular um, document. So next slide, please. So in total, we were able to um, survey 193 beekeepers um, from across uh, eight Caribbean islands, including um, Antigua and Barbuda. Um, uh, this represents, unfortunately, only 24% of the beekeepers in each of the um, in, in the total for the uh, participating countries, which seems like a, lo a, a low amount. But when considering that this project and this survey was completed during COVID under lockdown, as well as um, within the population of beekeepers, which are how should I say beekeepers tend to be a little bit resistant sometimes to providing information to surveys. Um, and we were really proud of the fact that we were able to get almost 25% of the actual population of beekeepers in the island. So even though the responses may have seemed low, um, we have to take into consideration that the results that we're providing is representative of the population of beekeepers that we did collect the data from. Next slide, please. So in overall, what did this, this survey um, show? Well, first of all, that the majority of beekeepers across the Caribbean are male and that they are um, part-time. So most of the respondents were part-time beekeepers, but they were registered within their respective countries. Um, they also only had one to five years of experience. Now, it, what it just indicated to us was that the group of beekeepers who responded to the survey were actually the younger beekeepers who were very um, enthusiastic about getting more information about expanding their beekeeping practice. In terms of apiaries and forage, what was extremely interesting um, was the fact that even though we had eight countries represented across the entire Caribbean, as well as in Samoa, which is on the other side of the world in the Pacific, we were able to still identify a number of common forage amongst all of the islands. And the common forage that these beekeepers indicated that their bees feed regularly off of are mango, coconut, avocado, palm, cashew, coffee and glaricida. Now these particular trees are extremely important because they speak to the potential of um, expanding forage for bees. So now all of our countries can go out and plant these trees with the understanding that they will provide um, food and support for bee, bee populations, whether it be in a structured apiculture setting, you know, in, a, in an apiary, or whether we are providing it for feral bees or even native bees, bees that are not actually in a structured um, uh, system. In terms of apiculture knowledge and management, most of the respondents managed between one to 10 colonies, which they, they basically um, inspected every one to two weeks. And importantly also, uh, the beekeepers themselves identify diseases as an important cause of colony collapse. However, they do not check for the diseases. Now, this is an important point that Richard will, will speak to later on in the presentation. But disease knowledge is something, uh, a, a limitation that we identified in the actual um, uh, survey itself in terms of the participate the beekeepers from the different countries. Most of the countries their beekeepers who participated in our survey identified that diseases were a problem, but they weren't checking for them. Um, in terms of honey production, on average, the respondents indicated they harvested between one to three gallons once per quarter, um, that they also harvested beeswax, and they identified three main limitations for the expansion of their, of, of their uh, project or, their, uh, or their, um, their practice, and that was funding, 
sourcing, beekeeping supplies, and of course, technical support, which includes training, proper training and understanding the practice of beekeeping. Now, this is an important um, finding if, um, because what eventually happened is that based on the results of the, of the baseline study, we then proceeded to develop um, other elements of this project in order to um, provide for the needs of the beekeepers that were surveyed. Here we have a map of the bees um, that were identified across the Caribbean based on the information provided to us by the beekeepers. What is clear is that European and Italian bees are present in most of the islands except Trinidad. Um, uh, Tobago has European and um, uh, Italian bees. Trinidad has native bees, which is the stingless bees, Melipinas, as well as Trigonia. Um, those are very present, but Trinidad is characterized by Africanized bees. What is also of interest is that there is also an increase presence of Africanized bees um, across the um, Antilles, which is knowledge that was not there before. Um, um, specifically, most countries um, in the Lesser Antilles um, believe that they do not have Africanized bees. And what this project was able to identify was that there is some level of Africanization of, of bees in some of the islands. And this is an important finding that also feeds into another project that Richard will speak to you later on. Next slide, please. All right. Um, uh, we skipped a slide, unfortunately. So the second objective was the development of um, a training content and material that could meet the needs of beekeepers from across the entire Caribbean. Now, you would recall in, my, in our results from the baseline study that I just presented, that one of the limitations that they identified was technical support and technical expertise, including training. Well, in order to address that particular need, this regional project created the first Caribbean online beekeeping course. And this online beekeeping course, can you just go back please, consists of 17 modules. The 17 modules are outlined there. And this is a very unique beekeeping course because we contain two modules that are not contained in any other beekeeping course found anywhere in the world. And those two modules are the health and safety in beekeeping and gender considerations in beekeeping. We have actually um, released this course. Um, it is public available on the website that you're seeing at the bottom of the page and we've already run two cohorts of the course and have, we have 182 graduates from eight countries already um, completing the course and uh, what we've also been able to do is that we've been able to get the blessings of Jeff SGP, the University of the West Indies, ECA, SLBC, um, which is the St. Lucia Bureau of Standards, um, BestNet, which is a, a regional UNEP project found in most of the um, Caribbean islands that participated, the Ministry of Planning of Trinidad and Tobago, and the Association of Caribbean Beekeeping Organizations. Next slide, please. Um, Okay, so this was actually the slide I was supposed to come before. So um, what we've been able to do for the course so far is develop the online beekeeping course, train um, the theoretical aspects of, of beekeeping. And then we are now, um, Richard is now going to visit each of the islands now that all our countries are not in lockdown anymore. And he's already completed training, practical training and in Antigua and Barbuda, Trinidad and Tobago, Anguilla and St. Lucia. He is to continue the training in the other islands very soon. Um, uh, Mr. Romulus Giles has already indicated that Richard would actually be going to Somoa next year, which is again um, an important um, achievement. So, you know, we, we're looking at actual in-person exchange aside from the, um, the online virtual exchanges that we've seen so far. Next slide, please. All right, so this is an example of the certificate that the participants of the online beekeeping course receives. Um, and you would notice that it contains all of the logos of the participating organizations that have, lit, uh, li, that have endorsed this online beekeeping course. Um, all of the um, uh, lecturers are presented at the bottom of the of the fee of, of the certificate and they actually sign the course uh, certificates such are provided to the to the actual um, individual beekeepers who are trained so we've had so far um we've had three um graduation ceremonies one in trinidad st lucia and st vincent and the grenadines and we look forward to having graduation ceremonies to hand distribute in person the certificates going forward next slide please 
All right, and this is where I hand over to Richard, who will now take over the presentation and speak to the research and innovation that has been um, pioneered through this uh, regional project. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Mahabe. Um, graciously passes through those slides, um, but we're not finished yet, Mr. Technician. We need to continue the presentation, please. So can we go back to the slide? Thank you. So um, the third objective of this program was to design, equip, and establish a res research and innovation program to benefit SGB countries. Um, our primary, how we, did we achieve that? How do you achieve research and innovation that can touch so many countries at the same time? So the first thing we did because it was COVID and we were restricted in our movements, we said, okay, we're gonna, we're gonna develop an app. So we developed a hive management app, which allows beekeepers to record the information on the, on the, hive, the hive inspections, um, observations, which they see terrestrially with the weather, what's in bloom and so forth. So that was one of the main issues that we, um, we covered there, and we we covered that so we can also give support to our neighboring countries by we were able to access that data, they could send us information and we could review it and we could give them assistance. So this is being beta tested in most of our program, most of the participating countries. Um, we've also done some hive monitoring where we can remotely access data from the hives and to see how they're performing, if there are anything of erroneous is happening in these areas. Um, we've also done some research, as Dr. Mahabe alluded to, to a hybridization of bees. Uh, there are some ways that you can look at bees and based upon the anecdotal behavior, how, how they respond to you when you go and do the hive inspection, if they're very defensive or if they're nice and calm and they don't fizz about too much in the comb. You know, if they're nice and they just relax, that's good. Those are nice bees and these are normally tendencies that are of European bees. However, Bees that have been hybridized with the Africanized strain will have a totally different behavior. And you will need to definitely have your suit on, have your gloves on, have your veil and everything um, to work with those bees. So we've been testing those um, throughout the region, looking at different countries and using wing scan analysis. And we've been able to identify um, scientifically um, color countries that do have hybridized bees. I don't like to use the word Africanized. I like to use the word hybridized. I think that's more uh, in keeping um, with what is actually happening. Um, disease testing. Um, looking for pathogens in bees. This is something that's very important because even though we didn't get a full gambit of beekeepers to participate in the survey, based upon some of the experienced beekeepers that we are working with and the inexperienced beekeepers, the information we got from them was very telling that their production levels, even though we were getting see, one to four gallons every quarter from each hive, it was still not high enough when you look at historical records. Some beekeepers were getting much more, I mean, but the average, when you average out all the figures, it's not a significant figure. So. What we looked at was what else could be playing a factor in slowing our bees down. We've heard of colony collapse disorder in North America, but we've never experienced something as catastrophic as that in the Caribbean. Um, but what we have experienced is the pest varroa mites. Um, so we started to delve, uh, take that route, look at that route, and then we started doing viral testing to see what viruses were being spread by the varroa mite which we'll touch on a little later in the presentation. Next slides, okay, we're there, wonderful. So for research and innovation and monitoring, this is, a, this is a, a, on the right hand side, you'll see one of the graphical user interfaces for our Hive app, which works currently on all Android phones. We are currently working on an Apple edition for all the Apple users like myself, um, but we are working on that and taking out a few of the bugs. But the Hive app's aim was to improve Hive management by enabling beekeepers to capture and store data on their phones. Everybody has a cell phone, it's easy to use. Um, so they can capture Hive inspection data, forage information, for example, what's in bloom, uh, weather, wind speed, uh, et cetera. Uh, so far we have 97 beekeepers in 10 countries using the app. Um, so this is a very low cost option and it enables 
farmers, beekeepers to keep track of the information. One of the things with farm, farming, the farming industry, we are very poor on record keeping. So this tool should help us in that regards. Um, let's talk a little bit about the hybridization of honeybees. So in a combined team, um, ourselves at IAC, with assistance from Sir Arthur Lewis Community, Community College, uh, we were able to pioneer on continuing work that had been done by French experts, Afinov, in 2018, if I believe, under the Japan, the JCCP project. Um, to, uh, we reaffirmed some of their findings um, using wing scan analysis. Um, and what we did was look by using the left, looking at the left wing, um, we scan it and we are able to identify evolutionary images, lineages of subspecies of bees. Um, and this is very good information because not only we can be very specific as to what particular colonies of species or subspecies of bees that we have in the individual islands, as well as identifying the level of hybridization that may have occurred. Um, this, soft, this project uses software which enables semi-automated classification of bees based on geometric metamorphics of wing characteristics. And we trained two students from Sir Arthur Lewis Community College um, to do this and they actually took the work they did with us and entered it into the science fair and they actually won the prize in their category. So this is, um, you know, young ladies that took an, an interest in biology, and then we were able to give them a real life, a real life, a real life experience to, to apply their biology skills, and they won a prize. So I think that will spur them on to pursue that field further in the future. Um, so let's go on to the next slide, please. Okay, so I touched a little bit on varroa mite across the Caribbean, and from our survey, we could see that varroa mite is pretty much extensive right throughout the Caribbean. And we've got basically, we, our map there um, highlights almost every island. Um, the one island I went to uh, was Antigua, Barbuda, and the island of Barbuda, we found no varroa mites in any of the colonies we tested there. Um, and that's something very, very, very good news for beekeeping um, because if we have to do run some virus scans there, and if those bees can come up clean of viruses, this is a great potential source for us to have um, for Queen's production for the region and maybe beyond that. So this is a very important finding for us, and that's come out of this project. Uh, well, kind of like a, indirectly out of this project. So let's push on. So pathogen testing of bees. So what we've done so far, uh, we've taken bee samples from 10 apiaries, um, were collected from two countries in our in our um, regional project, Trinidad and St. Lucia, and we compared that to existing data. And we sent these samples to the uh, University of North, North Carolina State University, where they are accredited laboratory for bee pathogen testing. They do tests for all over North America, people send their bees there to be tested. So the, the, results advise, the results advise on the diseases in the present in the Caribbean and hopefully could guide us on a way forward. So next slide, please. All right, so for, because these figures have not been officially published, we're not gonna say which country is which, but we've got country one, Guyana, country three, and the United States. So United States, as you can see, has every single thing under the world and under the sun, and is still able to successfully export honey all over the world and consume it. Um, there was some results that were, which were presented at our ACBO Congress in 2020 by Guyana. So these are published results officially, um, and we've been able to uh, use those to benchmark our data. However, what the table indicates is that country one and Guyana both have similar viral loads, uh, viral loads to the United States, um, whilst three shows less similarity. But what is concerning is that all three, all three countries um, do have deformed wing virus strains, both A and B. And deformed wing virus can be some of a debilitating disease. Uh, when the bees emerge from the comb, from the comb, they will have either no wings or a very 
perforated, damaged wing. And that means that bee will not be able to c contribute to the production of the hive, forage, look after bees and so forth. So it's very important that we look at that. And we also found um, Lake Sinai virus, which can also um, seriously infect, um, affect the performance of a colony of bees. So these two factors could be having a significant impact on the performance of our bees and the production that they're able to, um, to achieve. Um, and so further investigation is required into what these presence of these pathogens and as Mr. Romulus alluded to, we have a project on the table which will be reviewed by his board uh, for us to do further testing and our colleague here, also St. Lucia and National Conservation Fund, we also applied as a joint project and they have also approved for us to, um, to do to fund testing and, and pathogen analysis. So we've got two agencies that we've brought together to support this research for us to do a, uh, a full diagnostic study exactly what's happening in our bees in St. Lucia. And I've also spoken to colleagues in Antigua and Barbuda who have also received funding as well to do the same study. So we'll be able to benchmark our figures both in Antigua and Barbuda to what we have in St. Lucia and what existing we've got from Trinidad and Guyana so forth and a more extensive way to look at what's happening and hopefully we can fund find further funding to look at other islands to establish what's happening in our Caribbean territories. So this is a fantastic um, opportunity that's going to be created 2023-2024. However, I must say, and I, I see my colleagues from ECORA here, which I'm happy to see them here, but in response uh, to the varroa mite threat, um, ICA, in partnership with the Argentine government, brought apiculture experts to the region from Argentina. And subsequent to that intervention, um, the ISC was able to partner with uh, cooperative Campero, and we are now the distributors of the oxalic um, product, uh, the organic product, Ulan Cap, and a organic oxalic acid mite treatment, which we, have dis we are distributing throughout the Caribbean um, even to, to Trinidad, uh, St. Vincent, Grenada, all the islands in our project have this product. So this is one of the fantastic interventions that has happened um, and has been spurred indirectly, but with all, but because we are working together as a kind of a regional body, everybody's been able to benefit from um, this work so far. So congratulations to ICA in those efforts as well and the Argentine government. La moving on, so one of the outputs for this project was the development of an institution uh, for apiculture to really thrive and live and develop and grow. And through Mr. Romulus's vision, uh, we have started the, and the development and putting together the ideas and paper with, uh, with engineering and so forth is the Makoti Apiculture Research, Research and Learning Institute, better known as Mali. And Mali will hopefully be located in the Makoti Mangrove, um, that yellow dot on the top close to the highway. I'm sure Mr. Romulus will give us some more, a little brief on that a little later on in his presentation. Um, this is a, ren the next slide please sir, um, is a nice rendering of what the beautiful fac facilities potentially will look like. Next slide please sir. And here's a close-up, one of the renderings done by Mr. Kofi, um, which was a wonderful architectural masterpiece. All right, so finally, um, recommendations coming out of the baseline study. Best practices, beekeepers to be trained in best practices for maintaining bee health in the apiary. Without help, if you manage healthy, strong bees, um, you will have the production required. So it's essential that you work in that regards. Education and skills development. Beekeepers should be provided with accurate theoretical and practical skill trainings on how to nurture well-adapted and healthy um, honeybee population. So this is important once again. Queen rearing is another important aspect, the ability for beekeepers to, to create queens to support their colonies. You may find you have a queen that is fading um, and she's not producing as well as possible, you need to replace her, and you need to be more efficient than doing walkaway splits. It takes time, and you, you may, it may be take you a month and a half before you have a producing colony, where if you have, you're able to produce queens, 
um, efficiently, uh, you can have a colony up in operation within two to th two weeks. All right, so, and this is something that was synonymous at Spoken at, at concluded Congress. A lot of beekeepers said they need the ability to learn how to produce queens, and this was an integral part of our project as also. Um, next slide, please, sir. Uh, viral load analysis, I touched on it already. Uh, following, for, following from our first um, viral, node, viral node information, we should really look at doing a Caribbean-wise viral load um, study to see where we are so uh, as a region and we need to train persons to be responsible for this disease, disease analysis and apiary inspections and disease status monitoring. Um, we have a lot of new threats on the horizon. Some of you may have heard of the Asian Hornet. It's already in Europe and parts of North America. It probably got their own container ships moving around. We need to have our eyes open to make sure that those pests don't get to our country because if they do, they could be, have a debilitating effect on the work that's been done so far. Um, Tropolalus mites, um, these are also emerging threats to apiculture in, um, across the world, which we need to be mindful of. Um, integrated pest management, beekeepers should be trained in integrated pest management programs. Uh, it needs to be the foundation work. It is just as you clean your home, you manage to keep sanitary conditions, Integrated pest management must be one of the foundations of beekeeping in the Caribbean. I'm trying to push on as fast as possible. Value-added products. Uh, we need to do training workshops for persons in value-added products. Um, honey, as Mr. Romulus would always say, is a low-hanging fruit. There are other more valuable commodities, which I think are displayed on his nice, nice um, pull-up banner here, propolis. Bee pollen, royal jelly, bee bread, um, bee venom. There's many things that you can produce from that. Take extract from the hive that have much more value than honey. Honey is just the easy stuff. We need to go after the more complicated, um, uh, more valuable items. And this is just an example of propolis tincture, which has been very popular since COVID. A lot of people are using propolis tinctures um, to help boost their immune system very easily. Um, agrochemical testing work is urgently needed in the South-South collaborating countries. Uh, we need to determine the effects of agrochemicals on the environment, especially on our native fl flora and fauna. Um, you know, it's not just honeybees, we've got other pollinators, hummingbirds um, and stingless bees and bees that burrow in the ground. We also need to look out for these guys as well. Uh, there's a, a there is a need for testing in order to augment an understanding of the potential damage they may inflict on honeybees and other pollinators overall. So we're seeing many effects of this happening and we really need to respond to it. Um, medicinal honey. Honey is an ancient remedy which, can be, which has recently regained recognition on its usefulness to modern medicine for its medical properties. A lot of organization people have Antibiotics have now become, people have become resistant to antibiotics because it's in their food, it's in the water system. So honey is being re-emerged as a, 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 treat, a dose to treat wound cares and so forth. And it's very important that we follow in that vein. A number of countries have adopted that practice. So and beekeepers should look to try to identify what species their plants are going after and if, these, if their honey has medicinal properties so they could sell it at a, a higher premium value because it, does, it has things. Um, Manuka honey, for example, it's not the best honey tasting honey in the world, but because they've focused in and zoomed on on the medicinal properties of that honey, it's be able to carry a higher price. And we have probably 1% of the world's land mass, but we carry about 3% of the world's biodiversity. And the unique thing about our honey from the Caribbean, because we don't have this heavy um, agricultural base, which we are fighting with, um, our honey is normally, it's basically wildflowers, the trees, the forests, the rainforests, and it makes our honey very unique, and it has a lot of special medicinal properties. We just need to exploit that opportunity and to market our honey in that regards to give it extra value. Um, Lastly, scientific apiculture. Um, we need to consider 
incorporating the science into our modern apiculture uh, practices. And um, without science, we cannot move forward. And I think it's very important that we find funding from organizations from Jeff who have been very gracious to support us, SLUNCF, have been very great, gracious in supporting apiculture and putting funding into research and scientific research, which is very important for the industry to grow. Um, that's the end of my presentation for now. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Colleagues, uh, uh, we, we're going to open the floor for one or two questions. Uh, anybody has a question for, for Richard and Sada as well? If you have any question or comment or clarification, we'll be entertaining that now. Or is, was it so clear that? So, gentleman in the back. Yes. Um, how can a normal person access or get access to the training that they are interested in? Um, we have. All of our modules are, th are on our website, ironallapiculture.org. Um, they're free of charge. You can go and access them individually by yourself 24-7. However, uh, we, if you want to do it as an, in as an intensive training program, uh, we do schedule one-on-one -on -one training opportunities uh, to, to get the certificate um, on a quarterly basis. So our next batch of training will be happening in January, second week of January 2023. Um, so if you go to the website, we'll have it advertised, and you could sign up, sign up for um, to join the uh, training program. Then, all right. So, but we all, but the material and literature, we have it as free of charge on our website because people need to get access to it. To people who've completed the course may want to go back and check some information. The YouTube videos, the the notes, and everything is there. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Craig. Thank you, Richard, for this. Uh, I also want to do something else before Richard leaves the uh, floor here. I want to invite him to autograph three of the uh, publications, and we will deliver them to uh, three persons in the audience. We will start with Dean Pollard, then the Honorable Minister, and we'll also go to our UN rep here, uh, uh, Lorian. Uh, Richard is, is using my chip pen. This is Mr. No, man, I mean, I, this is Mr. Rumbles' pen. So this pen signs checks for lots of, <laughs> it approves projects for, for millions of dollars. So if I use one of his pens, I mean, this is definitely... You might get a million dollars. Well, I don't... Dean, can you please come out? Uh, I, I don't know if I'll get a million, but I'll get a million. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Richard. I think from Richard's presentation, you'll gather a number of things. We do not want to repeat the examples of a banana industry. We want, don't want to become primary producers in apiculture. I see the top of the mountain, value chain, up and up and up and up. Not honey alone, ladies and gentlemen, but apitoxin. One gram, a hundred US dollars, ching ching. <laughs> One gram, a hundred US dollars when I checked on the market this weekend. I don't want us to be stuck in the traditional mode of honey production. We have to use science to improve our management of apiculture in St. Lucia, the OECS, and the world. So we're gonna bring more scientific methods to help us improve in the management, and particularly in the context of climate change. We are going to have to use science to help us to protect our bees and to improve production. Climate change is a reality. Our colleagues are in Egypt talking about climate change at this very moment, at this very, very moment. 
So this is what we're about, introducing science to improve, to develop, and to promote apiculture in the Caribbean. I want to uh, turn your attention to those graphics we have here. While we were thinking about apiculture, one of the ideas in the early days that came to me, and I'm sure Dame and Honorable Minister will remember, as you drove into Roseau in the 1960s, on the right was a research enterprise. Julius, my friend, will remember that. Ambassador Edsel Edmonds was the head of that research enterprise into bananas, diseases into bananas, types of bananas. Where is it now? Disappeared. Destroying the scientific foundation on which our banana industry was based. Let this not happen to us again. And therefore, it is because of that idea we are promoting Mali, the Makoti Apiculture Research and Learning Institute. This is designed using the hexagonal morphology of hives. Hexagonal morphology of hives. One, two, three, four, five. We are going to have one of these dedicated to apiculture research. Another two, mangroves and coastal coral reefs. A third to gastronomy, the byproducts of honey. We can make banana essence. We should have been able to make 100,000 things in bananas. That research facility must bring us derivatives from the use of honey. And it must be used in St. Lucia and the world and promoted. And very important, we are going to use one of these for STEAM, for STEM, science, technology, art, mathematics, engineering. We are going to find some of our best minds, young minds in St. Lucia, and take them there on weekends or whether we get our best teachers. Let us improve the scientific foundation of this country. Let us promote the culture of research. We are going to have the best technologies there. Let them think of problems and solve them. It is in solving those problems you build your capacity and your confidence in yourself. And that is what we aim. So this semicircular, hexagonal shaped structure is going to be there for posterity to be used. But we're very concerned about our health too. To the left here, you see two little structures. This is going to be for epitherapy. What is epitherapy? We have a lot of problems with breathing these days, asthma, bronchitis, and so on. We have gone to Eastern Europe and found examples where bees are put in the flooring of buildings, and persons can go in there and breathe in the air produced by the, the bees. And that clears your esophagus, your breathing, and so on, improves yourself. And you can also improve your sleeping patterns. We are told that the, the bees may modulate the, the, the rhythm, let's say, or the melodies at night, and that can sync with yours and improve your sleeping patterns. Epitherapy, we expect this to have high demand when it begins in that area. I'm going to book the first one, though. <laughs> and of course, we are going to have epitourism, having persons to visit this site, and of course, pay uh, a fee to go in there. So it's going to be our, perhaps our first center of research, learning, development for St. Lucia. The business plan calls for some seven to eight million dollars worth of investment. We are at the point today, the Development Control Authority, I know that because they told me that yesterday, they are looking at the recommendations we made for undertaking the environmental impact and social assessment of the site. So by next week, we need to have consultants in the field to do the EISA, which should be completed by January, and then we go looking for the funds. I'm optimistic. I'm optimistic that we'll be able to access the funding for this. Presenting Mali, conceptually, watch it in a year's time, it will be an actuality. And I thank Kofi Dover, our architect, who has given us a lot of pro bono. Um, you know, Kofi, stand up and take a clap, man. Kofi has given us a lot of pro bono assistance. Thank you, Kofi. Thank you very much. We now move on to the next um, point in our agenda. And this one is the presentation on Hiwanara Honey Show. Um, 
the results from our last honey show. Um, just to give you a synopsis of the results that came from an independent survey. A lot of the work we do, we have to evaluate what we do, the perce our perceptions people have, and so on. So we're going to present now the summary of the results from the 2021, 2021 survey. Uh, can you get the slides on, please? On, on, the, on the screen. So we gave you a sense of what St. Lucians felt about the first honey show that was held on the 10th of December, 2021. And it was based on this, we have now planned 2022. Uh, okay, here it comes. Summary of perception and financial impact study. You know how our people want to make some money from participating in those honey shows. So we did a, a study. Mr. Brandon, go back, please. Go back to the start. Okay, Mr. Brandon Antoine was the independent, uh, he's an m and &E expert. He's now an attorney at law now, I think, and I'm presenting the, the, the results. Next slide, please. What uh, Antoine did, he divided the population into three cohorts. That's honey show competitors and exhibitors who were based at the city hall. There were 21 such exhibitors and there were 83 exhibits. And there were exhibitors at Constitution Park. There were 16 of them. And then he also look at visitors uh, coming to both Constitution Park and the City Hall, and 156 visitors were surveyed. Next slide. The methodology, he did his project document review, interview of key stakeholders, interview of visitors, key informant interviews, and also some non-participant observation to come up with his conclusions. Level of satisfaction. The honey show in the City Hall, we had an 80, 94% satisfaction rate. 6% uh, of the interviews were neutral, didn't have a view. When it came to the exhibition in Constitution Park, another 94% satisfaction rate and 6% neutral. The Honey Show and Exhibition is an average or mean of the, the first two. When you look at the Honey Show and Exhibition for visitors of 156 persons that made up the, uh, the sample, 88% were satisfied and 13% were neutral with 1% saying they're dissatisfied. Next slide. Did honey, did, the, did honey show an exhibition meet expectations? As you can see, met expectations in the 89 percentile range. Everybody was above 88 uh, percent. Did not meet expectations, 12 percent, 13. Some of the reasons varied from the cost. Uh, we did not uh, invest in uh, some of our um, exhibitors. We expected them to cover the costs, and that uh, contributed to uh, uh, comments such as this. Next slide. Participation in future shows, you can see 100% said yes. Um, down the line, 89% of visitors said they would come to such a show again, and uh, the average, the mean was 91%. That in itself has given us the impetus to repeat the honey show. Next slide. Financial impact, 60% made a profit. 60% of the participants who sold their products made a profit. 40% did not cover the cost of sales. And that is where the negative comment came. Those persons with um, products that did not have a high effective demand, we need, uh, the recommendation is that we need to try to assist them in the future to meet some of the costs. The major challenge, of course, we did that during the COVID-19 pandemic and all the protocols were in place. And we didn't get the youth participation from schools because, of course, of the COVID-19 uh, situation. We used all the protocols were in place and therefore the, the level of interaction that we expected between our epiculturists and the public and so on were not at the level that we wanted uh, at all. Next slide. Some recommendations. Um, again, the, the products in the um, City Hall at, at Constitution Park were primarily honey products, and some people said no, they should have a, a more diverse line of products in the future. But it was a honey show, and I, we, expected it, we expected honey to be there. But our solutions say, even in a honey show, you must have diversity of other kinds, okay? This IOD is an equi. And uh, a significant and varied formats we use. During the build up to the Honey Show last year, we were very aggressive and assertive on social media and also the public media. But at the event it said itself, we didn't have the MC was focusing on playing music and it did not educate people sufficiently. And that has come out, and that is, we take this at heart and we're going to address it this year. 
Um, and we also had the recommendation that incentives need to be provided for those exhibitors that are providing, you know, uh, a different uh, a set of goods for display and so on. So this year we're going to have to look and see what we can do to assist them with. Next slide. And thank you. <laughs> Very short and sweet. Uh, so with an 88%, 89% satisfaction rate, 90, sorry, 94% satisfaction rate, and the fact that uh, persons are 100% of our population this would come back to such a honey show, we are going to repeat it. And we hope this is going to be um, an event that the Ministry of Agriculture takes on in subsequent years. Um, IAC and Jeff, we have... Uh, won the load uh, for the last two years, and we hope that the Ministry of Tourism, the Ministry of Agriculture, and of course the Ministry of Consumer Affairs would create a partnership for progress in St. Lucia starting next year. Thank you very much for, this, uh, for listening to this short presentation. We now again call upon Richard to tell us about apiculture, the Hiwanawa Apiculture Show for 2022. Richard, let's welcome Richard. Thank you again, ladies and gentlemen. Um, it's not the Richard show, it's the Giles show. <laughs> I'm just helping in the Giles show. Um, well, whilst the technician brings a slide on show, um, you know, it's apiculture is, it's a way of life. It's a really interesting subject um, and I wish I could impart the passion I have for bees um, in, into everybody. <laughs> possibly, possibly. Anyway, without further ado, um, let's push on and talk about the honey show and what is a honey show. Um, so a honey show is a very interesting thing. It's an opportunity for our beekeepers to present their product, but not just present it in the way, the tea boutique kind of way you normally see it, but really take the time and the effort and to elevate themselves and the quality of their product to present a product that they think could win a competition. And that's the whole, that's the whole idea of this, is to really help by having this competition, it should stir up improvement, stir up quality, stir up pride in the product because honey is really the true reflection of the taste of a country. It embraces our water resources, it embraces our trees and our plants, the nectar that the bees draw from it, and it, it embraces the craft of the beekeepers, the attention and the love they give to their bees to produce the final product, their management skills, their husbandry skills. So honey is not, rum is not the taste of solution. Honey is the taste of solution, man. I want, I want that to be the new, the new emblem, and honey is the taste of solution. So it's a traditional way for beekeepers to share their quality of the honey, maybe separate out the flavors that come out during the course of the year and bottle them and present them to a judge and say, look, this is Lachi Lamawi, or this is Savonet honey, and, or this is Capesh honey, and how does it taste? and take the time out to select those blossoms from the hive and put it in a bottle and let it be judged by their peers or in the competition against their peers. And that's what a honey shows. And it's a lot of fun as well. Don't get me wrong, it's a lot of fun and, 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 and in involvement. Next slide, please, sir. So, next slide. So, we, our competition at this time is just for solution competitors but I'm hoping that as we progress and we grow, that we'll be allowed to bring in our regional colleagues to see if we can see how they compete against us extraordinarily great and fantastic St. Lucian honey and see if we can really have a competition amongst the islands to see who really has the best honey in the Caribbean. All right, so that's our aim, but for now, we're just a local competition. We have several classes of competition. Uh, the honey and jar uh, is that which we judge the predominantly our colors of honey are light amber, uh, light amber and dark. So these are the three categories, color categories that we're looking at. Uh, we judge wax products, so you can have match, two matching candles or you can have a wax block. These are other categories. Uh, one which is open to the general public is our, bake, is our, our baking with honey. So 
we have our standard cake recipe, which we have this standard cake recipe, which we give to everybody and say, go make this cake and bring it back the day of the competition. And we pick the judges pick the best one based on moisture, taste, and your ability to follow the instructions. Um, and then we have honey baked goods where you can produce a cake or cupcakes or biscuits or anything containing honey of your own interest, which you like, which you desire, and we will judge it and it will be presented. Uh, we have art and photography. We have a junior art and an adult art. Um, the theme must be something to do with beekeeping or contain a bee in your picture which you draw. Um, and similarly in photography, the same rules apply. Um, and our latest addition to the show is our honey cocktail drink and of course synonymously uh, our brand of choice is bounty rum <laughs> the spirit of Saint Lucia. so so we've got the spirit and the taste of Saint Lucia coming together in a, in a cocktail so hopefully um that's going to be very interesting and the Saint Lucian public and visitors can enjoy that um, I'm not going to go too drill down too much in the details, but this is the criteria of what we're looking for. That everybody will not it will be given an identical jar to put their honey in, so there will be no um, well, with the favoritism. So everybody presents there in an unlabeled standard jar, which everybody gets the same jar, and it's just got a code in it to identify each competitor. Uh, so the judges just see a number; they don't know who the number belongs to and they will just judge it based on uh, clarity, cleanliness of no debris in the jar, no fingerprints on the jar, the viscosity, the moisture content is below 20%, the aroma, taste and color. So they'll be just looking at these categories and they will not be totally blind as to who the product came from. Um, and this is just a color chart. So our honeys in Solution are somewhere around here majority of our, color, our honey is so this is the color categories we are looking at but if your other color countries will produce very light white honey but our colors are here because and you know and it's the, there's a saying the darker the honey the more medicinal the values properties are so this is so our honeys are very dark in in color so it has more medicinal properties uh, moving on, uh, we have the honey and comb, which is basically a, a, a jar as such, which a piece of comb in inside of it, filled with honey. That's another category, and it's an example of a, a, a winning a winning piece. Uh, we have the beeswax, and oops, next slide, please, sir. Uh, the beeswax. Um, so a one pound of of beeswax, you can put it in a nice case like this. The judges are looking for the aroma, the color. Um, no bits of debris in it. So we're looking for a quality product that's really good because most beekeepers will sell on their beeswax to people who produce cosmetics or hair products. And you want to know that the person, so the guy that produces the best beeswax will probably be a good candidate to supply these people with good products. So you really want to help in a, raise the standard of this product so that you know when you pass it on to a, a, a customer, they know they got a first class product also um, next slide uh, commercial class we've kind of changed the commercial class this year last year the commercial class was just for com commercial honey so the, you, as you would see the honey in the bottle in the supermarkets or your local corner shop but we've now increased the variety to include any product that con con has an extract from the hive so it could be honey or it could be somebody making propolis or it could be somebody making a cosmetic product, but the, but your product must conform to Bureau of Standards regulations. So your labeling must be right and so forth. So another way, once again, to try to improve the standard of the products being produced through the sector. Um, and, and, and so, you, you know, so that we have this elevation, this, this natural progression of products that become better and more exciting and interesting. I was at the Congress in, Trin in, um, in St. Vincent last week and there were some wonderful products a lady from Dominica made. Wonderful packaging, really, really lip balms, beautiful, all beeswax. She even had a, a cannabis infused lip balm. I, I mean, but that's the creativity of what's happening. Um, and, and the packaging was top shelf. You thought it was from North America. All right, so we want to try to 
raise our standards and and get better and hopefully the honey show should be for be the catalyst for um apiculture based products becoming better and and that's the vision that jeff and iac sees for sees for this um next slide please uh the honey cake honey cake this is my favorite i haven't got a bit of a belly um but i'm a avid cake fan and this is an open category. Anyone in St. Lucia, anybody, your, your mum, your auntie, your grandma, anybody who loves to bake cakes can enter this category. We have a set recipe, as I said. You follow the recipe, bake the cake, you bring it, um, you bring it to us and we will judge it. The judges will be there. Chef Orlando is, our, is our, 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 our leading the charge in, in judging those entries. And, um, you know, I think we should get 2,000, 3,000 cakes, man, because I know St. Lucians love to bake cakes. And so, I mean, I I'm, can't wait to, to get my slice of cake from each of these pieces of cake. All right, so to speak. Next one, please, sir. Uh, as I said before, the Honey Bakery, this is where you can express yourself with your own ingenuity. If you want to make some cupcakes, if you want to make some biscuits, um, if you want to make something really imaginative, you know, it's all up to you. This is just supply the recipe you use so the judges can review it and to see if it's if it's matches the taste matches up with what you say is on the paper. Um, so but this is definitely where you can have your creative flair all of your own. This is the best. This is so if you want to make your you don't want to follow our cake recipe, you want to make your own cake recipe, enter it into this category, the honey bakery, and try your chances. Uh, Miss Cleopatra, I see in the back there. I hope that all the smiles on your face means that I'll be definitely seeing a lot of entries from yourself this year. All right. Um, photographic, once again, um, you know, all photographic exhibits must depict either a beekeeping scene or uh, something to do with a bee. This one here is a gentleman working in his beehives um, and it's pretty scenic. So it's up to you but it must be something B related that happens in the picture. Um, our junior art, similarly, it could be a picture of a B, whatever the kids want to draw, their self-expression, but it just must be B related once again. And our adult art, next slide please. Once again, it could be as complicated and as beautiful as this or something even more simple, but it must be B related or of that type. Um, next slide, please, sir. No, you missed one. Honey cocktail. Perfect. All right, so, and as I said before, the honey cocktail is a, a new addition. The taste of St. Lucia, or oh, sorry, the spirit of St. Lucia means the taste of St. Lucia, and we combine them together. Um, set rules. It must not be a shot. It has to be a, a, short, a short drink or a tall drink. Um, you got, I think, eight minutes to make the drink and you got to also have some pre-samples available for the crowd to judge so they can give some crowd support to the judges to see who wins all right but that's it for me on the honey show i think um we're gonna have a, a hopefully a fantastic event in fact i'm sure we'll have a fantastic event we've got a lot of sponsors involved from the arc Ministry of Agriculture, of course, Jeff SGP, St. Lucia, St. Lucia National Conservation Fund, um, this the brewery, um, ECA. Um, wow, this, we have a, it takes a lot to pull off the app. Ah, there you go. That's, thank you for the support, sir. Um, yeah, St. Lucia Tourism Authority, Massey Stores. Um, one important one, Vita B Health, the CEO of Vita B Health, it's the largest um, bee supply, health bee supply products company in Europe. The CEO, Mr. Owens, will be flying in. He's an avid, he's, a, he's done the Atlantic Cruiser for Rally for Cruisers twice. And he said, Richard, you're doing this. I'm not competing this year, but I'm gonna fly in to support, to support the show and to give my buddies um, in, uh, at the, in, the, in who competed this year some support. So that's the kind of, the level of, of vision you know people are interested in honey has its own uh, spectrum of people um and you know they're not you know and i think it's important that it's something that we try to develop this marriage between uh honey and tourism um, we have the only currently the only apiculture tour in st lucia um, we have our site in vg and we have we work closely with cox and company 
Uh, we started last year with assistance from, once again from a grant from Jeff. We set up our little facility there. Um, uh, last year was a little tough because of COVID, but this year we're now listed on, I think, five of the major cruise ships. All right, so from December right through to March, we are packed with tours. Um, and that's a real blessing because a lot of the people that I have trained, um, I'm trying to push them into, listen, do this, do this. I don't want to do it, but you could do this and you can make a, you can manage this and you could run with it. I don't really have to be involved in it. I can give oversight and guidance, but it's really for the young people to participate in that and run with it. And that's what I'm trying to do. Um, and in all the projects I'm working on, we're working with the Department of Sustainable Development. We have two projects in, um, one in Deborah, one in uh, Moshi area, which we're trying to also incorporate into Api Tourism. So it's a very important part of the future. So with no further ado, because I see Mr. Romulus is going to punch me in the head soon, I will thank you for your time and your listening ears. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Richard. You know, as Richard spoke there, I began to dream a little bit. And, you know, I dreamt of the Rose of Valley being transformed into a bee sanctuary. Maybe 300 acres of bee plants, 10,000 hives, production of healthy honey, epitourism, epitoxins, 100 US a gram. Whoa. I wonder which product in St. Lucia will ever give us that, a hundred years a gram. So we are challenging you here today, St. Lucia. And we're going to challenge the minister now to come and represent our government's position on agriculture in St. Lucia. I have a pleasure and an honor to invite a lady I've admired for many years to speak to us on the government's view and perspective on apiculture. Join me in welcoming her to the podium. <laughs> yeah, we good, I think so, yeah. yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to I would like you to join me in showing appreciation to Mr. Romulus and Mr. Richard Mathias for the work that they have done, the, the courage. But you know, as I sat there and listened to, to Richard in particular, Mr. Romulus is always there, visioning, dreaming, bringing us to the other level, but I'm happy that he is equally matched by Richard in terms of this particular area, in terms of honey. So let us show our appreciation to these two gentlemen. You know, in everything we do, we need the passion to do it. We need the passion, and I want to thank you for this. Having a protocol list here, but with your permission, I would like to recognize among us the Impolet Luisi, Mr. Romulus, Mr. Richard Mathias. Uh, we had a presenter before us in terms of Dr. Chandra Mahabir, and we had I believe some UN representatives here in the audience with us. And I also want in a very special way to recognize esteemed ladies and gentlemen here in the audience and all our um, followers on the television and other social media. I bring you, I must say, I want to say I'm very pleased to be here and I bring you greetings from our Honorable Prime Minister and the Cabinet of Ministers, in particular, our Minister for Agriculture, with his apologies that he cannot be with us today here, as well as the Minister for Sustainable Development, Honorable Sean Edwards. 
And as I listen to you, I know my colleague, Dr. Unesile, would be excited as well because with his community tourism program, I see this fitting very nicely in there. So ladies and gentlemen, a few days ago, a few weeks ago, we heard the news that our banana industry was challenged with high transportation costs to the UK. And the minister and the government had to make a decision in terms of cost effectiveness. And our shipment to the UK was put on hold while we tried to deal with the regional market. So as minister with responsibility for commerce, and as a St. Lucian, we went through an agonizing period. What's going to happen to us if the price, transportation cost continues to increase? And also as a farmer, I know the challenges that our farmers are facing. So as a minister, as a parliamentary rep, when I speak to my farmers, they come to my office and they want all types of assistance. But how would our farmers survive, I pondered. And I immediately asserted that as a government, we must do everything possible to assist them. Then my agony transitioned to hopefulness and then enthusiasm when I receive an invitation on the weekend to address you at the launch of a baseline study on management practices in apiculture in seven countries and the second Uranora National Honey Show in St. Lucia. Though I did not envisage for a moment that apiculture could completely replace the banana industry. I immediately saw it as an avenue for additional income and revenue in rural St. Lucia. It is therefore in this context that I address you today, that is one of enthusiasm and expectancy. And we've seen quite a bit of this this morning from our two gentlemen. I have been informed that since 2012, the apiculture industry in St. Lucia has been going through a quiet renaissance with the Global Environment Facility Small Grant Program, which is implemented by the United Nations Development Program, the Jeff SGP UNDP leading the way. This organization has invested over US 1.2 million in the industry to transform it from traditional approaches to a more scientific approach while encouraging the move up the value chain. I want you to take a moment to show our appreciation to the person who is leading that charge, and that is Mr. Richard Mathias. I say so because you may not know, but Richard knows that at one point I was a bee farmer myself. <laughs> So I, I understood, I am understanding very clearly where we are, where we were, and where he's taking us. So I really want to, appreciate, to say thank you to you today, Richard, for the work that you're doing. I was also informed that the global honey market stood at US $8.17 billion in 2021 and is expected to grow at a compound growth rate of 5.2% between 2022 and 2030 to over 13 billion US dollars. My conclusion from these figures though, 
is that though the demand for honey in St. Lucia is much higher than the supply, I wonder if there were products and by products St. Lucia would benefit from. In fact, my immediate thought was that we should not repeat the mistakes of the banana years by remaining only primary producers. And you've heard Mr. Romulus giving us that same message. But we must make every attempt to move up the value chain. In my research thus far, I have made five exciting discoveries about our growing apiculture industry in St. Lucia. And they are as follows. One, between 2012 and 2022, four new organizations in St. Lucia began producing honey. And production among Jeff SGP grantees increased by approximately 30%. Two, apiculturists have successfully moved up the value chain and we can now successfully extract honey, bee wax, propolis, bee pollen, and epitoxin. Our research has informed us further that one gram of epitoxin can sell for US $100 and higher depending on its purity and is sold to pharmaceutical companies on the international market. Our experimental export from St. Lucia to France for epitoxin creams recently yielded US $1,500 for, for 40 grams, sorry, that is, US $37.50 per gram, or EC $100. Can you tell me if any industry rises to that level in St. Lucia at the moment? Three, in St. Lucia, we have successfully integrated remote monitor monitoring technology in hives which can allow a farmer to monitor the health of his or her hives from almost anywhere in St. Lucia and the world. The efficiency here cannot be over discounted. Four, we have started AP tourism tours in St. Lucia, during which visitors can learn about the industry visit live hives and participate in making scented candles while spreading the fruits of tourism to rural St. Lucia. And five, part of this renaissance in apiculture is the design, construction, and establishment of the Makote Apiculture Research and Learning Institute, Mali. And you heard quite a bit, and you saw Mr. Rumilas giving us a visual impact of what this is going to be. I've been informed that the conceptual drawings are now before the DCA, and an environmental impact and social assessment has been requested and is expected within the next few weeks. Ladies and gentlemen, for these quiet achievements, join me in congratulating the engineers of this renaissance. They are the Jeff SGP UNDP, the Inter-American Institute for Cooperation on Agriculture, the Ministry of Agriculture, and the Ministry of Sustainable Development, and our farmers. Let us show our appreciation to all of them. Let me state boldly that these achievements cannot be allowed to feed, but must be nourished to higher levels. And I will boldly say that as a Minister for Commerce and as a member of the Cabinet, 
my government will support this initiative. It is therefore within this context that I'm highly pleased to be associated with the launch of the baseline study on management practices in Antigua and Barbuda, Dominica, Grenada, St. Kitts and Nevis, St. Lucia, Trinidad and Tobago, and Samoa. This bold outreach by St. Lucia to share its expertise with other countries and to learn from them must be highly commended. I understand that the document points to areas in which improvements are required and donor funds can be sourced. I therefore call on the multilateral, bilateral, and the private sector to assist our government in addressing the needs identified. I'm also elated to declare the planning and implementation period for the second Uranora Honey Show open. With this activity wisely connected to the Atlantic Rally for Cruisers this year, my government notes this partnership of over 10 organizations contributing to making this event a reality. We must therefore extend our appreciation to Jeff, the ARC, IGY, Marina, the government of St. Lucia, the St. Lucia National Conservation Fund, Massey Stores, and all the exhibitors and competitors. Let us make this second show at least one Gropiton height above last year's and let next year begin to participate in the International Honey Show in the United Kingdom. This is a challenge, but I think we can achieve that. I end this short address in a state of great expectations for the apiculture industry in St. Lucia and the islands of the Eastern Caribbean and appeal to the OECS Secretariat to begin to play a more central role in that industry with such great potential. I am further overjoyed that those persons leading the renaissance of the apiculture industry in St. Lucia have adopted a scientific approach and will seek not to repeat the mistakes of our banana years. Let us therefore be resolute and move towards creating a thriving industry for present and future generations. And let me commit the support of the Ministry of Commerce, especially Export St. Lucia, to the marketing and promotion of this industry. And I'm very glad that the Bureau of Standards is already working with you in establishing international standards. Finally, let this event be an impetus to the development of the apiculture industry in St. Lucia and the other participating countries. Ladies and gentlemen, may the good Lord guide us on this journey. I thank you. Wow, well, almost an, an epistle in apiculture, you know. We can take that, hand it to the Cabinet of Ministers next Monday, and tell them to stamp it. I'll be at the door to receive a copy, okay? I'll be there to receive a copy and distribute it. Um, really pleased, Minister, for this uh, speech. I think you have captured the direction in which we are going. I think your support is noted. We certainly will be calling upon you for your assistance. And I have a little story to, to tell you. If Usain Bolt had not persisted beyond Greece, none of you would know Usain Bolt's name today. In his very first Olympics, he didn't even place in the top five. I think he was number seventh in the 200 meters. But remember Beijing, 9.69 seconds. Remember Berlin, 9.58 seconds. 
Well, a good friend of mine by the name of Richard Matthias decided to send a bottle of honey to England to try a thing. You know, just try it. Let's see how we're going to fare. Didn't make any preparation. Mili poti langlite. The United Kingdom International Honey Show was a few weeks ago. He did better than Usain Bolt. <laughs> he came second. He came second in the category that was identified and in which the honey was placed. Is that not true, sir? Uh, yes, it is. <laughs> I don't know why. He, I don't know why. I don't know why he is so embarrassed by coming second in the category at our first attempt. At our first attempt. Now I don't like second. <laughs> From next year, you see, I never learned to to to, to come beyond one. It was just one, one, one. I never learned to, <laughs> it's ones and zeros. I, I understand now, you know, <laughs> you can pretend language. So, Madam Minister, when we come to you and say we are off to London, I hope your ministry will support us. And Richard. It'll be first in amber, first in light, first in dark, first in cake, first in everything. That's what we're going through. Okay, sir? And the honey show on the 10th of December is but a trial run for what we expect to do in London in about a year or so. Ladies and gentlemen, join me in welcoming Stephanie Peter, my extremely capable assistant, to move the vote of thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Romulus. Let us accept the protocol already established for today's proceedings. The Jeff SGP UNDP and the Ionola Apiculture Collective extend appreciation to our distinguished Governor General Emeritus, Dame Dr. Paulette Louisi, who is also a member of our NSC for always supporting our various public events. We are deeply appreciative for your continued support and enthusiasm in our work. Our distinguished Minister of Commerce, Honorable Emma Hippolyte agreed to participate despite our late request and her busy schedule. We bow to you, Minister. We also extend our appreciation to Mr. Julius Polius, a member of our NSC, for coming to our support. To Dr. Shada Mahabir, our colleague, National Coordinator from Trinidad and Tobago, we send our warmest appreciation as well as all those who join us via various platforms and the NTN television. We thank our colleagues from ICA for the continued support. A special thanks to Mr. Sean Duvaux, the manager of the Ronnie Bay Marina, whose support this year will take the Honey Show to a higher level of outreach, and we hope profitability for our exhibitors. To all our sponsors who have come on board to date, the Government of St. Lucia, Export St. Lucia, and Massey Stores, we also extend our appreciation and look forward to continued cooperation in the future. Finally, a profound thank you to Davina Lee and the staff of NTN GIS for providing us with the facilities to broadcast and promote this event live. Ladies and gentlemen, I thank you. Thank you very much, Stephanie, and all good things must come to an end. We thank you for your presence here today, um, all those in studio. We thank those joining us via NTN television. We thank those joining us through the various uh, Facebook uh, and YouTube platforms. Richard, we thank you for your presentations. Minister, Dave, all of you, thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. Au revoir. A bientôt. Bye-bye. Thank you for joining us. Bye.